you might you might have some, you know, thoughts about certain things. No, I'm done. I'm gonna fuck it up. Kick ass. <laughs> What I want to hear about is like what your experience has been with them sonically and, and your vision of, of how it should be presented. Well, I think most of it is about the performance. Getting just the impact of this song. It starts really soft and then it's just it's just a smash in your face that just pounds it. We waste any more time. And then when it comes down into these choruses, like it gets it's a little prettier and it's it's a, it's a little less a le little less aggressive. I mean, it's pretty easy to, you know, with two guitars, bass, and drums, to to keep the impact and keep the keep the power going. But you have these other elements. You have this harp. The harp lines are really kind of the transitional points. Mm -hmm. It kind of draws you out of this rock moment. Literally, where do you where do you hear the harp in the mix? I mean, does it is it a background thing? Is it a it's not totally foreground, like, I mean, it's not like up in your face like the vocal, and I think it should have a certain level of ambience around it. I'm, I'm liking the double vocal thing going on yeah, I love throughout. That. It's just, it's creating this, this richness mm -hmm. that I really, really like. And it, and it also contributes to the power for me. Yeah, I agree. Where would you like to see it go from here, beyond the, the power thing that we talked about? Bringing the bottom end out mm -hmm. and getting the bass to kind of really lock in there. With yeah. And then getting those guitars to sound pretty wide. I like the vocals to be up and... Yeah, I want to really hear, hear every word. Yeah. Idle hands in idle times can claim the lives of friends of mine. I'm using Cubase 4.1.2. Uh, it's a BST host, so we'll be running the uh, UAD plugs off the UAD card in a VST format. And I like Cubase a lot. The uh, mix bus is really smooth on the top end to me, so I choose that as the platform today. I start with a blank canvas of just the tracks and I get together a mix of what we have. And rather than spread the same EQ and the same compressor across every track, uh, I tailor each track uh, for specific plugins. You know, one track may, in my mind, require a pull tech, another track will require a Neve, some will be compressed, some will not be compressed, and some tracks I won't even touch. When I would group my drums and put a compressor on the group, uh, when the kick drum really got, got going, it would take down the whole bus because the compressor would react. So I start sending all of my kick drums to one bus and the whole rest of the kit to a separate drum bus. Uh, the guitars typically all run to a common bus, the vocals to a common bus. I like to use delays. They take up a lot less space, but uh, in some cases, reverb really can just add a little more dimension to things. So in this case, I'm running a, a couple different reverbs and a delay and spreading things out uh, kind of on an a la carte basis. Let's talk about uh, Zach's vocal for a sec. We've got, uh, we've got two tracks. We start off with the 1073, the Neve, and just doing a little bit of a low cut and a little bit of boost in the uh, upper mid range around 4.6K. That is followed up by an 1176 LN, and the goal in this is to just capture the initial transients of the vocal, and then to smooth that out on the back end, I've got an LA-2A, so essentially on Zach's vocal, this is your chain, 1073, 1176, LA-2A, so let's take a listen to that. Before we waste any more time, I must tell you that I love you. For Brittany, we've got uh, once again, a 1073 on her with a lot of low cut and uh, just giving her a very subtle boost uh, at 10K. And then that is followed up by an LE2A. Their vocals together sound like this. Before we waste any more time, I must tell you that I love you. Steven's vocal is a little less affected, it's primarily just an 1176. When idle hands and idle times can claim the lives of friends of mine. So the guitars uh, sound like 
this. I'll play it for you and then I'll explain the chain. Okay, so on Zach's guitar on the 57, we've got the Neve 1081. And over here, we also are following that up with an LA-2A. On Louie, we've got the Helios, followed up by uh, an LA-2A as well. Those are going to a common guitar bus, uh, and those are being affected globally by a Pultec Pro, just to kind of give a little extra sweetening on the on both guitars. Brittany had a harp that was, I guess, what was that, kind of a portable little harp. Took a DI, ran it also to an old Mesa Boogie guitar amp and uh, took a buyer ribbon mic on that. The amp, got a little 1081 going, and uh, we've also got uh, the VCA compressor. So we used 41 plugins in total. And I think we took a, a broad sampling of a lot of different plugins, EQs, compressors, reverbs, delays, miscellaneous stuff like Transient Designer. The snare drum, I wasn't 100% pleased with the tone off the raw track, and I EQ'd it to death and found that that just wasn't solving the problem. So I pulled the Transient Designer out, turned the attack up, pulled the sustain back a bit, and I got exactly the tone that I was looking for without having to use any kind of samples or anything. I mean, 37 plugins, and that is operating at 55% DSP usage. Versus the UAD-1, we're using four plugins on the UAD-1, and it is at 65% DSP usage. So clearly the UAD-2 is very powerful and really holding its own with that large amount of plugins on there. And that's a lot of, you know, Reverbs, delays, compressors, EQs, every kind of plug-in out there that Universal Audio has.